is the unboxing of a brick, a yellow brick, from the Yellow Brick Road from the Wizard of Oz. That's right. I got a great price for this on eBay. No, I'm kidding. This is actually just a plain old box that's been covered with some sort of yellow cellophane type substance that was super glued on and can never be taken off. But what is inside this box? Well, you already know from the title of this video. It is the Duke Audio Little Bear B4X. X as in extreme. So when Duke Audio decided to ship this package, this item, they decided that because the B4X, X for extreme, was so extreme that it did not need a very nice box. They could just put it inside a cardboard box and wrap that cardboard box within uh, a plastic substance that can never be taken off. Which is, when you, if you buy it, just take a knife and cut off the edge, because that's the only way you'll ever get inside this box. Whatever formula of glue that they're using is really, really strong. Anyway, once you cut into the box, you will immediately notice that there's not much resistance. Just slice it through and open it up. And when you do, you will also see that there's nothing special about this box. It's just a plain old cardboard box. Inside is a foam package and some accessories. The first set of accessories are these rubber band thingies that you always get with every portable amplifier. They're, are, they're, they're supposed to be wrapped around the amplifier and your source, like a, a phone or a digital audio player to keep everything together. You also get a 12 volt charging adapter, which is nice. I'm glad that they put that in there, but you can use any one that you may have lying around. You also get a three and a half to three and a half jumper cable. And this is the absolute perfect size. If you go on Amazon, you look for these jumper cables, more often than not, you'll find something that's at least one foot and, and a lot of times longer. You don't want something like that hanging around, just a few inches, six inches at most, and that'll do with the job. So I'm glad that Duke Audio included that with this packaging. Now let's just get to the B4X. It's wrapped inside the foam and then wrapped again inside some cellophane-ish type material. And when you pull it out, you just notice that it's it's a hunk of beast. And on the bottom, you can see that they've very nicely labeled B4X after the little bear. It's a headphone amplifier with tubes. Now, this thing is a little unique from the original version of the B4 for two reasons. One, it has a balanced headphone output. So how you would function this is that you put in the three and a half millimeter into the input, which by the way is not balanced, and you can put in balanced headphones into the balanced output. The second implementation, the second change that they made is that they have a dedicated on off switch on the bottom. In the original version, the on off switch was the volume. And so you had to twist open or twist the volume to turn it on. Uh, some people complained about that. So Duke Audio made a change apparently. Once you turn on the unit, you can see that the tubes glow. And they glow because they're actually doing something. Those tubes are the reason you have a tube amplifier. They give that tubey sound. Looking around, you will notice that there is nothing ostentatious about this. It's made of metal, and it's big, and it's clunky, and it just looks, well, it looks robust, and it probably is. There's nothing here that you wouldn't actually need, and they only give you what they advertised in the marketing which is a refreshing change, don't you think? How about we take a look inside and see what's going on? Now, in order to open and access the B4X, you're gonna need hex wrenches. Uh, I also had these regular screwdrivers, the tiny ones, but you don't need that. Now, the reason you may wanna do that is that you may want to change the tubes. They're soldered onto a board, but if you know soldering and you can find those little tubes, go ahead and change them to your heart's content. But the other thing you can do is you can change the op amps. There are two op amps in there. These are generic op amps. There's nothing really special about them. And individuals who have changed the op amps have, in fact, said that there's a big difference, especially if you get some quality op amps. So after you unscrew the top with the hex wrench, just gently pull out the board itself. Now, it's a little flimsy, so be careful. Don't just kind of yank it out because things will go flying everywhere. You see the tubes on either side, and between the tubes, the two dark spots there, those are the op amps. On the back is the battery. 
the top two here are not the four things there are not the op amps the op amps are actually in the middle we'll take a greater look at the op amps when I have a chance to replace them now I already had op amps from Burson but they're for the play the Burson play headphone amplifier so if you go out and you buy op amps make sure you get the right type not every op amp is for this little thing in fact there are very few op amps that are supposed to fit into this little mechanism consequently be very careful also don't touch the uh, the thing that I'm touching uh, because I touched it a couple of times and it got a little uh, loose uh, so, so don't do that don't touch anything you don't really supposed to touch Ugh, I hope it still works anyway just slide this thing right back in and screw in all the screws and you're ready to go what do I think of this thing well it does give you a really tubey sound there's some popping and some sizzling and that tube stuff goes on is it a portable tube amp? <laughs> well, heck yeah.